Hello and welcome to another maintenance blog. In the first of this three-part series, I looked at the Raymarine T70216 pack and what was included in that pack. I also removed the housing for the old BNG transducer and replaced it with an MR Intelligent Triducer. In this video, I'll be going up the mast and replacing the old BNG wind vane with the Raymarine short arm wind vane transducer. So this is the Raymarine wind vane that goes with the ITC5 unit. So I have to install that today. Working at the top of the mast is always a bit tricky because you can't really get any good purchase on anything. You also can't get on top of anything to exert any so pressure Woody's onto it. Unless of course you've got uh, mast steps, which I don't. So Woody's going up the mast. Sierra Nevada mountains up there and the rest of Almiramar. Luckily as we just come out of the yard we had a spare halyard because most yards actually ask you to take the genoa off so they don't accidentally unfurl while they're in the yard in high winds and make the boats topple over. We're in an ideal situation we've got the jenny halyard which is what I'm coming up on we've got the spinnaker halyard which is my safety line yeah if anything happens to the sheaves then it just catches on the mast. We had to take the genoa off when we were in the yard and so we've got the Halyard spare before we put the general back on. And we've also got this spare block that I put in last time I was up to put the bucket on. So the first task was to remove the old transducer cable. So we attached a mouse line to it as we pulled it up through the mast and we used that mouse line to thread the new transducer cable back down through the mast. masking tape on there and that's as strong as it's going to be and the thing is about the masking tape is it's quite flexible I've used gaffer tape in the past but it tends to peel off the corners and then stick fast to the inside of the mast so I just at least with masking tape you've got a bit more flexibility keep pulling okay give us a second this is obviously a two-person job because you need somebody to feed the cable at the top of the mast while somebody pulls it from below. It can be made easier by lubricating the cable with olive oil or washing up liquid. I mounted the, um, the tricolour over the hole because that adds a bit of UV protection to the wires at the most vulnerable part. And it also means that the wire can run straight up into the tricolour without being exposed to the outside of the mast. This UV is a killer up here. There's a really strange U-bend at the bottom which um, it's it's, it's very compact and it's very difficult to get to so we're just having a few problems getting that um, masking taped end around the bend it's going to go down up and down again um, but at least we've got the wire through the the mast now so I need to take off the old BNG stuff I must admit I mean this BNG stuff has been here for 20 years it's really good quality you know it's British made but you know it's at its time now it's very UV damaged and we can't get a like a, a constant reading from it that's gone through nicely and now all I need to do is get this off, this old B&G one. Right, I'm just going to swap some stuff over, okay? Obviously the screws had been in there for over 20 years and were difficult to take out but this is where boat friends come in handy. Have you still got your impact driver? Yeah. Would it be possible to borrow it? I need a, a, a flathead impact driver. Okay, I'll get it. Thanks mate. I'll need the hammer as well. 
could uh, maybe try some WD-40. So with the help of a impact driver and WD-40 and a big screwdriver which I had to grind down to get the, the tip into the slot of the screw, I uh, eventually got three of the screws out. But the fourth one absolutely wouldn't budge, so I had to resort to power tooling for that one. As the screw holes didn't match the new mounting, I had to re-drill new holes for that. As I'm uh, putting stainless steel nuts and bolts to an aluminium mast, I'm just putting some Duralac on there to stop any galvanic corrosion. It's really sticky stuff and horrible. So I've got M4 bolts. This is where it gets fiddly. I can get one on, and the other one should be easier. There's one. That's got an insulated washer there, and then a stainless washer there, just to separate the stainless from the aluminium mast. Okay. So we might be in business. Stupidly, I only bought up two nuts. If I drop one, I've got to go down again. You got it! I kind of measured it from there and actually it goes way inside so uh, I've got all this spare so what I'll do is I'll probably grind those off so they don't catch with any ropes or sails or anything else that's flapping around up here just to be safe. So once the mounting was in place I could finally add the transducer. There she is. Excellent. Hello? Can you see where that went? Because it's hot. Make sure it's not on the dinghy. Uh, there's got to be another one come down in a minute. Can you just make sure it doesn't land on the dinghy? That's it, job done. Solid. Before I came sailing I used to make a lot of furniture um, and I used to use uh, a lot of evolution tools and Makita and uh, the occasional DeWalt uh, but more recently I've been borrowing my friend's Milwaukee tools which are extremely well built and light as well for working at the top of the mast and in small spaces so uh, yeah, I'm kind of coming round to his way of thinking on the, uh, on the tool front. Next it was a matter of pulling the cables through to the junction box at the base of the mast. So next job is to cut the wire and put it in some chop blocks at the bottom of the mast. So I took off the old B&G junction box, which probably wasn't strictly necessary, um, and I replaced it with the Raymarine junction box.
I then replaced the cable running to the nav station by using the old cable as a mousing line to pull the new cable through. And then I joined them both together at the junction box. So I'm just joining the wires together and I'm just doubling them over just to give them a bit of reinforcement. So I'm just going to bring the two joining cables up through there. I've already put the grommets on and so it should just be about slipping it on, hopefully. So in the next video, I'll be replacing the old BNG transducer controller, which is on the NMEA 0183 system, and I'll be replacing it with the ITC5 Raymarine, which is on the NMEA 2000 system. And I'll also be wiring up the i70 multifunction display. In the absence of a drone, uh, this is our equivalent of a drone shot. <laughs> So thanks in particular to our patrons for supporting us through these crazy times. I do like the occasional beer, as I've mentioned before. So if you do want to become a patron, click on the link below in the description and become a patron for no more than the price of beer a month. <laughs>